The following podcast is intended for mature audiences. If you enjoy our work, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow the links in the description. Thanks for your support, and enjoy. Greetings and salutations, listeners. I, Eric J. Chucky, joined, as always, by the raging Danny Rand to my calm, smooth Luke Cage, the boy. Hey, go fuck you. <laughs> go fuck me? <laughs> go fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tuner's <laughs> podcast. We're off to a good start. <laughs> uh, all right, preface, preface to the podcast. I'm sick, yo. Uh, so, you hear some sniffling, some sneezing. They're not going to get it out any more than his shit does. That's I how only we got a little cough now. It's nice. But, like, I'm sick, so... Just knock on I wood mean, very quietly so I, I don't mean, upset the mic. Y'all get to deal with that. I'm sorry. So, anyway, we're here to talk about The Defenders. Defenders! Uh, it was a Netflix series. Uh, they, took, they took our advice, and they cut out all the fucking filler episodes that are in a regular Netflix series, and they just stuck with the meat. We got eight episodes. Yeah, eight good episodes. Well... Eight good episodes. Yeah. We got, there's some nitpicking we could do. I, look, all right. So, spoiler free, you know, two notes podcast. Spoiler tradition. free review, fucking watch it. Yeah, fucking watch uh, Absolutely. If you've seen the other Netflix series, if you like three out of the four, watch it. Honestly, even if you haven't seen anything but Daredevil, I think you could get it's away Daredevil with season it. one and season two, yeah. Yeah, both seasons I would, are I would recommend watching Luke Cage. Oh, God, and yeah. I would recommend watching Jessica Jones If once. you have the intestinal fortitude. Yeah, once. Um, look, there's some backstory you're gonna miss for not watching Iron Fist, but guess what? Google that shit. Move on with your life. <laughs> um, but if you liked if you liked Iron Fist, watch it too, because there's a bunch of shit from Iron Fist in there. Yeah. I mean, that's a minor spoiler, but nothing that wasn't in the previews. Um, watch it. It's good. It's not perfect. No, it's not. It's not the best. It's thing not ever. season one of Daredevil mm-hmm. or season two or the Punisher parts of season two of of Daredevil. Or Luke Cage. Or the pre cotton mouth dying parts of Luke Cage. Yeah. Spoilers uh, on that, by the way. Uh, the look, fucking, you should have watched it by Snake now. The Snake Dumbledore. The, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> Why was that funny? God. <laughs> God damn it, it shouldn't have been. Man. We both laugh. Fuck both of us. Uh-huh. Fuck, fuck us. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Han Solo dies. <laughs> go, go fuck us. <laughs> <laughs> go fuck us. <laughs> All right, so oh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. So that's the spoiler-free part is pretty much gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fucking stick dies. There was, we go. Broke it. It was his sled. <laughs> <laughs> stick was Daredevil's sled the whole time. Yeah, was just, he was blind. He didn't know. He shows up and everyone else is like, that's just a sled, dude. You talking to a sled. <laughs> <laughs> but I can hear him talk. Sled! <laughs> but he, but Electra talk too. Look, I ain't gonna talk about you and your enabler girlfriend. It was a sled, okay? Listen, I believe in magic dragons, and that's a sled. <laughs> right now, you're talking to a sled. It's a red sled. It's a goddamn sled, and I need a drink. This place is fucked. <laughs> oh, Ugh. congratulations. That was pretty much the dialogue from the Defenders. Uh, this uh, Nah, Matt had a bunch of quippy jokes. Honestly, like, alright, so that's something we could start out with. All of the characters... In this show, all the main defenders, and even the side characters, less so the side characters, but definitely the four main defenders were really in character, including Danny Rand. Yeah. Danny Rand is as much of a shitbird in this as he is in his own show. Well, I like how they <laughs> combined the shitty Danny from the show with, like, a lot of the Danny from the comics. Like, you could definitely see him becoming that character. Yeah, he's, like, and I like that a lot of his interactions with Luke, like... Help to make him that character. Here's an idea. What if you just calm the fuck down? You, you know you got like a billion dollars, right? Why don't you use your billions of dollars, dumbass? About a billion dollars, I would help people. Do that. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and then he's all, "Shit, I haven't been doing that. I'm retarded." You're right. I should beat people to death with my billions of dollars. No, no, no. <laughs> You're missing the point. Like, like way far. You're taking out of this what you want. <laughs> I feel like you're not listening. <laughs> oh, but they got really good chemistry. Yeah. I love that. That's the one thing I was worried about with Finn Jones. Like, his first season, uh, look, Iron Fist was go- was garbage. But, like, if he had chemistry with, with Luke Cage, yeah, then a that's lot all that is, matters. Yeah. I for- I'll forgive a lot. 
to get Heroes for Hire. Well, and you and know I what? heard both actors really want to do it. They're both already signed on and super hyped to do Heroes for Hire, and they have good on-screen chemistry. The the beautiful thing as well is like just everything slid in. Like, okay, you said the secondary characters didn't have great characterization. They didn't. They there was a specific as good. thing. There, there was a specific thing I have a nitpick about, and I mean, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it, because fuck it. But, like, the, the last couple episodes of the show were, like, all of the secondary characters meeting each other and going, you do a good job, you do a good job, you do a great job, you do a great job, I do a good job. How's your mother? Job. How's your family? Yeah, how's your mother? How's your family? Good job. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Proud to be a friend. Proud to be in serving with you. You do a great job. You're not a secondary character at all. With okay, the de- break. It's good, it's good, <laughs> good to be part of the Defenders supporting cast with you. It was nice working with you. It was, it was I want to thank Lauren Michaels and uh, you too. <laughs> it's just like they did a lot of that. Uh, it was and it was it was that fast. Like these conversations were like like long conversations, long scenes, but they're these these rambling sort of back and forth. Hey, you're really uh, great at this. Would you stuff like to know one things. thing I am sort of annoyed by? What's that? Where my fuck they 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 tease this. Where the fuck was my Punisher cameo? Yeah, I he was in a couple of the, too. like he like one of the ends of the preview scene, like he, he <coughs> popped up and was like, "Looks like I came just in time," and it was like he walked out of the shadows. The fuck was my Punisher came? Maybe they maybe they cut it to save for Punisher. Yeah, and and save for time in the show overall. Maybe he just because they only out. got the. Eight. I feel like all right. So we bitched that a couple of these seasons go over long. I feel like Luke Cage suffered for killing Cottonmouth so early, and then Diamondback wasn't as good. I think we covered that. Uh, well, yeah, and like, and Jessica Jones had. Some I have filler. some. I have some arguments about that, but yeah. The only one that's really needed all of the episodes to do its shit. And was perfect thereby with season one of Daredevil. I will defend that fucking shit to the death. Like, day. it lagged a little in the middle, but not. I mean, that's me being super picky about that shit. But, like, I feel like eight episodes was maybe a little too short. They had to rush some mm. shit. Well, you know, I think this storyline necessitated that. There wasn't time. Because what I would do with a ninth episode is have them pal around a bit more. Yeah, I would just give some shit time, time to shit. breathe. Yeah. There, but, there just yeah, and really in, was not time. in character, they, they just didn't have time. No. Um, I'd like to point out that I love, I actually really like what they did with the hand, with the five fingers of the hand. That actually ended up being really cool. You know, a lot of my uh, issue going into this was that I don't give a fuck about the hand. And no, they ended up being like really groovy, really interesting. I love that they brought back these old villains we've seen throughout the other episodes. Well, I mean, the other they, they really only brought back uh, uh, Madame Gao. Who is Madame Gao and Bokuto and, and, and the guy from season one Daredevil. No, that was a different guy. That was was Nobu. it a different guy? That was yeah, Nobu. Nobu, he, he, Nobu no. was the ninja he fought, wasn't he? Yeah, Nobu was the ninja he fought. Nobu wasn't the guy in this season. He was the guy oh. who was Nobu's boss. Oh, oh, okay, my bad. Nobu my died bad. in season two of Daredevil. Stick killed him. Well, I mean, because man, Stick is a hard out. motherfucker. Bokuto died too. <laughs> That's actually a plot hole. Because, like, timeline-wise, Iron Fist takes place after Daredevil season two... And just after Daredevil Season 2 is when they resurrected Elektra, and then Bakudo died after that, and they make a really big deal out of the fact that they're out of the thing that lets them do resurrections, and then Bakudo's back anyway. Well, maybe he just got better. Because uh, he did just say, it didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's just, maybe he's really good at ninja, like how Gao has, like, telekinesis. Or maybe he, like, maybe, like, he had some, like, secreted away. Yeah, and he just took a little sippy sip. Like, one last, one last dose just for him. Yeah. Um, which would fit with his very, like, long-term schemer personality. Yeah, I really like how they Bakudo came together. Bakudo was way fucking better in this. Part. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Because, like, each of them individually shone really well. For, like, being bad people, but bad people with very different ideologies. And good at what they do. Like, Madame Gao was a fucking amazing character in this season. I believe that little old woman whipping people's asses in fight scene because she's a Jedi... <laughs> She has unexplained telekinesis, and we're not gonna we're not gonna ask. No, fine, whatever. You're She's the it. only one of the hand with magic powers. Like that, yeah. What? <laughs> but we're not asking. Okay, fine, fine. Um, I like Sigourney Weaver too. Uh, Alexandra was that her name? Yeah, Alexandra. Um, she did a really <laughs> good job. I was reading in the the Wikipedia article, and it mentioned that they like they wanted her to be a bitch, a really hateful person. But they didn't want to go for the Ice Queen trope because they didn't want her to be without character and warmth. And I think they really pulled that off. Yeah, they, they really She's, pulled off yeah. a high, a, a what, basically, all right, so 
if you're a DM, and there's a good overlap between people who like role-playing games and people who listen to our podcast, even if they're not, like, and people who like comics. If you're a DM, and you want to do an ancient vampire right, watch this series, Alexandria. I mean, like, you could just replace all of these characters with vampires, right down to the minions. I mean, minions. that's what they are. Yeah, uh, you know, weird sewer vampires, but still. Yeah, uh, like, <clears throat> if you want to do an ancient vampire right, Alexandria, or Bakudo, or shit, even, uh, I can't remember the name of, of the guy, uh, Murakami. They're all different flavors. Adam Gauzo. Like a like a demon, like a devil to me. Yeah, I mean, I think she can still be a vampire, but like a weird one. Yeah, like like an Asian flavor vampire who eats chi or some shit. Like you know, White Wolf. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was thinking of the Dresden Files, but yeah, uh, yeah uh, then White Wolf too. Yeah, I know. Look, he's not getting sued, but that's only through a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> um. That they did, they they really managed to portray people who both still had very personal and ultimately kind of grounded motivations, mm. and were also unbelievably evil. Yeah. Um, I still had a hard time super caring about Electra. I feel like her motivations were sort of muddled. Weird. Yeah, muddled. Yeah. I I would agree. I think it was intentional. Because we don't, we they don't want us to know for a, what percentage of her performance was she conning them. Sure, yeah. Because and eventually she like kills Alexandria, and like they, they hype Alexandria up as this badass who like she's yeah. Perfect. The whole time I was like, she's I can't like, wait to see her perfect. Fight scene. She's perfectly confident. Like this, the dude who was Nobu's <clears throat> boss, and we all know what a badass Nobu was, shows up to fight her, and he, he's like putting on his ass kicking gloves, and she's like, "You showed up alone." Fuck <laughs> Like, she was just 100% confident she was going to fucking wreck him. Yeah, that was cool, dude. And she ends up getting ganked from behind yeah. by Electra, And Electra's just back to her personality, but, like, crazier and evil, which they established in Iron Fist is what Hand Resurrection does to you. Sure, yeah. The more times you come back, the crazier and eviler you are. Yeah. They well, established that, cool, that. That cool African dude, too. He just he died pretty early, so. Yeah. So, like, they establish... Alexandria is a super badass, but she gets ganged from behind by uh, Electra, who then takes over by dent of the fact that she's willing to murder them, and they're super ancient, and they're willing to, like, okay, sure, whatever, crazy lady, just, like, we'll do what you say, just let us get our anti-murder juice, and then we'll take care of you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're, just, they're just getting by until their anti-murder juice is bad. <clears throat> but, like, it was such a, that's actually one of the few times that the really cool, well-developed villain, I, like, I liked that twist. I think they did that well. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I think it was a uh, good denial. It wasn't Cottonmouth. No, no. Well, it was like the like two episodes before the end. One maybe. But like, and also she goes from like weird robo like zombie Electra to right back to being herself, but way eviler. I think they muddle her intentionally because they don't want us to know what percentage of her shit is a con. Sure. Yeah. They really they really cloud that and. Um, <clears throat> I, I like as well uh, the ending fight with Daredevil, uh, because like I said earlier, they like she fucking kills Stick, which yes. Stick was fantastic in this too. Stick was fantastic and so true to his character motivations. Yeah, he spent a lifetime protecting Kun Lun and never getting to see it, and here's fucking Danny. <sighs> <laughs> She gets a fucking one-way well, plane ticket in. But even even with zero bitterness, I can 100% see where he's coming from. Yeah, he's... Stick sits there and goes, because this happened to me in a role-playing game. He sits there and goes, all right, this kid's the key to what they need. Well, he can't fucking, be the key if he's fucking dead, yeah, so... Yeah, kid, who gives a shit? Like, look, I'm a survivor. I, I fight the hand. The hand wants you. You gotta die, kid. There'll be another Iron Fist. Oh, it'll be fine. No big deal. Stick wins. Stick wins. <laughs> and, like, you could tell he was actually, like, he didn't want to do it. No, and I feel like he was like, like he was fucking meditating med- up to that point, and, like, like trying to. He used the meditation incense to to get the drop on Luke, and that was not, cool. Yeah, because again, Luke is fucking Luke can stop a truck and beat up a, a hand fing- one of the fingers of the hand all by himself with a squad of goons off screen. <laughs> 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 like Luke is Luke is really throwing the balance of this party off. Is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But like stick just stick just fucking eighty sixes him like it's not a thing. Stick just takes him out of the fight instantly whenever when he wants to. And then gets ready to murder Danny Rand because I mean that's what will stop it will stop the hand. 
I, there's another thing, another nitpick I want to make. It's perfectly in character. It's not a case of a, of a character being out of character. It's just a case of a character being in character and also a raging dumbass. If you're Danny Rand and you're in the place that you know your glowing magic super fist can break open with its punches and you see the lady, the super ninja lady who you're fighting start like side leg over to the wall and like standing in front of it like, come on, come on, bruh, come on, hit me, bruh. Yeah, but like you said, it's perfectly in character because remember when gatekeeper guy moved away from the wall, the drunken master dude, and Danny could have just gone in. And he's like, no, he's no. Like, no, I have to fight him because I I'm must Danny prove my kung ran. fu is strongest. He always must prove. Oh, he's yeah. he's such a tryhard. He must always prove that he is the strongest kung fu-sman because he feels incredibly guilty for abandoning Kun Lun. And if he's not the k- strongest kung fu-sman, why did he do it in the first place? <laughs> uh, I, it's perfectly well, in character. It's just also, oh my god, you titanic dumbass. Because sure. he even says he knows. It's not. A, he's not getting. He doesn't get tricked. He says, "I know what you want. You're not gonna get it." He knows that she wants him to use the Iron Fist so that she can fucking judo her way into using it to unlock the door. And he does it fucking anyway. Yeah, that sounds like him. Um, But anyway, so there's a point at the end where Daredevil and Elektra are fighting and they're doing the I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. Slap, slap. Right. Well, Daredevil is. Elektra's just being crazy. Because Elektra is, again, hand resurrected and thus... Nutballs. Right, but he's like trying to talk her down. He's like, I know the real you still in there, you know. You know, we had we had something together, we could be together. And then like I'm sitting there as the viewer going, Man, she just killed Stick like yesterday, and you were pretty upset about it earlier. And like right after that he goes, Gah, you killed Stick. <laughs> like like he remembered. <laughs> like he just saw like, like Electra and then like mid was like, Oh shit, yeah. You killed my dad essentially. My, my life is so fucked up, son of a bitch. <laughs> like I still I still wanna be with you, but goddamn, you murdered like my only father figure. And we had a complicated relationship. We did. He was really like weird abusive, but like he believed in me and he was there when it counted in like a really shitty asshole way. And we weren't friends, but he was important to me, and you murdered him, and you didn't have to murder him. Uh, but I do, I do still want to bone you, though. I've connected <sighs> with you in a way I've never connected with anyone. Uh, you understand the murdery side of me and the soft side of me. <sighs> like, you know what, fuck it, just drop a building on me, fam. <laughs> I don't feel like making this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, he straight up committed suicide by building. Oh, no, yeah, he definitely. Like, he, like, like, like Danny said that as well. Danny was like, yeah, no, he had no intention of leaving. He told me protect the city, which I love because they're probably not going to do it. But they did that in comics. Daredevil had to go away for a little while. So Danny put on the suit. Danny became the Daredevil. Yeah, which that that would be cool to see at least an episode of, you know, like this is what he's been doing. And now we pick up being Danny Rand again or some shit. That'd be nice. Or like him suggesting it and then Luke going, no. Don't put on the suit. That's disrespectful to the dead. Don't do that. Come on. But he told me to protect the city. You can do that as yourself. You can do that as Danny Rand. You can. You got a glow fist. That's your biggest weapon. That is the biggest tool in your toolbox, and you're not going to use that to protect the city. Are you stupid. Also, I like that they really sold up during the thing that, despite the fact that again, Danny Rand must be the strongest kung fu daredevil in a straight fight. If Danny Rand didn't have the fucking immortal iron fist, would whip his ass. Yeah. Like, Stick, Stick even said, he's one of the best natural fighters I've ever seen. Dare, Daredevil would fuck him up. Well, and that three-on-one fight they did with Jessica Luke and Daredevil against Iron Fist was, like, that was cool. And was, they, they also used that to sell that if Danny wasn't an, wasn't an idiot, he could, he could fuck them all up. Oh, yeah. The, the Iron Fist is a class above these people. He would win this fight if he wasn't also a complete fuck-up. <laughs> Uh, there was just a lot of good shit in it. Um, the, one of the other nitpicks is the first couple episodes are super slow. I like that, actually. Like, I know you weren't a Unor fan. I, I just, liked it because I, I liked the build. I liked the Japanese wrestling match of it. All just, right. And fair play. But with the exception of Luke Cage, we have had three seasons, four seasons of shows that were kind of a slow build toward this. Well, yeah. It's, it's, Luke, Luke Cage, Cage was not a slow build. Luke Cage did its thing. Luke Cage was so good. There were a couple episodes uh, in the middle that were kind of slow, but everything but, else was good. Like, uh, I want to mention 
the cinematography and and use of color. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that please do. Because they went out of their way in the in the um intro, you see uh in the intro, which I mean, if you're watching on Netflix, you don't really ever see it in the first episode because uh, it gives you a little skip intro button, and who doesn't use that? Uh, me, actually. I, I did every time. Uh, I, mean, I think I might have hit it once. They go out but... of their way to color code the people based on the. I mean, honestly, the overall color of their series. Sure. In, in unless my memory is you know going back and making things fit better. Yeah, uh, in hindsight, Jessica Jones was like there was it wasn't a blue <clears throat> filter. But shit was like. It might have been like a quiet blue filter, like not very intense. Like shit had like sort of a a grainy, realistic sort of noir detective vibe to it. Yeah, but it it was a bit blue and cool. Luke Cage is definitely the uses the warmest tones of all the Netflix Mm -hmm. series because Harlem is hot. It uses just yellows and reds and vibrant colors, orange and yeah. Um, Daredevil's about the the normalist, but he's red. So, so, I mean, in the series, in, in the Defenders, they go with that. And I don't think Danny Rand had, like, a green cast I to it. I think a lot of parts of it did, actually. Yeah, but, like, not a, not a deep one, not as deep a one as is in the No, series. it was more of a blue-green. But they, they, they simplify and they amplify each of the each of the show's, like, main motifs. Yeah, and, and in the opening credits, they, they show, like, each of them as lights in the city. And actually, I don't know if you picked up on this or not, because it took me several episodes to see it. When they first showed Jessica Jones, she's purple, and then it quick fades to blue. That's nice. Like, and it, I was like, oh, that was that was cool. That's cool. Um, but in before they get together, all of Jessica's scenes are a deep blue. Uh, like, you know, that washed out sort of modern New York, NYPD, you know, fucking Law and Order blue. And then... All of Iron Fist scenes have this weird greenish sort of dreamlike cast to them. Yeah, like it's like they were fucking getting high, and, and there's a green light bulb in the fucking dojo, <laughs> uh, and it, that sewer. All of Daredevil shit is like kind of just a little Dutch in its filming. Yeah, and red and deep dark tones. Well, they don't have to go that Dutch because it's aided by the fact that Matt never looks at anyone. So because that Charlie Cox is perhaps the best. The best non-blind actor to pretend to be blind. He's so good, it cost him other roles. Yeah, no, he's really good at it, dude. He's fantastic. He plays blind in such a realistic way in that he turns his head towards the people he's talking to. Yeah. But not his eyes. And he listens to them. If you you try it sometime. Well, and there are times when... It's so hard not to do. When he, like, looks into the lens, because that's what the shot calls for, and it seems unnatural. Not only for Daredevil the character... Because why would he be looking at that thing in that way? But also for the actor to, you know, he's kind of like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and he can care for that. <laughs> but like, and Luke is warm. Yeah. Every scene with Luke in it is like just fucking yellows and deep, rich colors. And like Harlem is alive, man. Yeah. And I love how when they come together, they come together in that Chinese restaurant. Which has got all that different neon. Yeah, it's got it's got neon. It's got shades of blue and green and red and yellow in it, and it just it works so well. <laughs> There's so many tiny aspects of this series which work exceptionally well. There are also aspects that I mean aren't great. We talked about a couple. But yeah. Is there anything else you could think of that that you would nitpick if you could? Um, I kind of wish. <coughs> Jessica had a slightly stronger role, dialogue-wise. Yeah, but as the Wolverine, I feel I'm like sure, yeah. her her character role was really strong, mm-hmm. and she also had the, like some of the most interesting shit to do. She did because she, she did. was the private investigator. She's right. the one who cracked the fucking case, dude. Yeah, she got put over well. I just wish she'd had a little bit more dialogue. as being actually a, a really good detective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, and she, also like, a raging alcoholic. She uh, <laughs> cracked Matt Murdock's backstory easy and like trotted and, like, out in front of him. Like, yeah, trotted it out thing. in front of him where someone else was there, so he couldn't call her on it, and just fucking waggled it in front of his face. And he was like, "So where'd you hear about that? I'm a detective. This is what I do." <laughs> This is me. Like, I like her as the grumpy, alcoholic, weird Batman of the group. Yeah, she's really cool, dude. I really like this interpretation of Jessica Jones. I think Kristen Ritter does a great job playing this serious, very dour character. Much better than I've seen her in comedies. Um, And she's, like, 
she leaves of when they do their original, you know, their initial team up, you know, fight. I, she's the one who bounces first. She's she's the one who says, you know what, this is this is stupid. I'm out. Bye. You guys are dumb. And like it feels perfect. It feels like what Jessica Jones would do. Yeah. She knows when she's out of her depth. This is out of her depth. I'm out. And also stupid. This is stupid. You sound stupid. And this is if it's if you're right. This is way out of my league. I'm gone. I am Gonesville. But she comes back because at the end of the day, even if she doesn't want to use the H word, she is one. I uh, I know it's Daredevil, and I know that has a lot to do with it, but. Like, they got me a lot on them Ninja Turtle vibes. Especially when they're in the, in the fucking Chinese restaurant. It's, you know, four very distinct personalities and their old wizened master. <laughs> but unlike Ninja Turtle, unlike Ninja Turtles, their old wizened master is a fucking asshole. <laughs> Look, they're all kind of fucking assholes. Except, like, not... Except Luke. Yeah, and Luke is... I mean... He's a little rough around the edges. He's a little rough around the edges, and he's a little he's a little quick to judge. He could be <coughs> the fucking asshole in some other show, but in this one, he's Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> like, compared to these guys, he's way well adjusted. He's a little quick to judge. I feel well, like... Well, I think that was a little... The, there's a scene where he basically gives Danny a dressing down that, don't get me wrong, Danny sorely needed. Sorely. But at the same time... He is discounting a lot of Danny Rand's life in order to give him that dressing down. And he is being kind of quick to judge Danny as a person based on it. And I like that. I like that because it fits with Luke and his experiences and who he is as a person. Yeah, because he's not, like, mean about it, but there is that bitterness. Because here's this rich white guy with all this power. This is the guy. This is Zibadi. He's the dude who could do everything and doesn't. And instead of doing all that everything and being he's, practical about it... He's, he's punching a guy that Luke was trying to help. Right. And, like, he's going after the small fry when he could go right to the top, which, I mean... Why you why you why you banging on bacon, man? Why you why you fighting a dude who's just trying to feed his family? That was a good fucking line. Oh, it was fantastic. That was a that was a dressing down that Danny ran sorely fucking. Well, and it was really deep, and it resonated with a lot of the themes of the street level crime, and and you know the the questions you have to ask because these are these are things Batman has touched on before. You know, these guys are just trying to get by in a city that's kind of fucked up. You know, should you really be breaking all their arms? And you and you come and you punch him and you don't and you don't help afterward. Side note: Internet Batman does. I will fight you. But um, like Danny needed that dressing down, but also it wasn't in the moment from Luke earned. It sure. was earned on D- Danny needed it. Right, right. He was, but Luke hadn't earned the right to give it. Luke, Luke was talking to a silhouette. He was. Yeah, talking Luke to was a talking figure. to a. Luke was talking to it. A, a straw man of what he saw Danny Rand as. Now, it just so happens that he was right about a lot of what he said, but that doesn't make the motivations any different, and I actually really like that. Yeah, it's nice to have flaws even in your big speeches. Um, I loved how absolutely convinced, blinded even, Alexandra was by the black sky. Like, And I love how Gao drops and is like, that was your prophecy, dude. That was your thing. This, 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 this whole thing is your thing. Yeah. None of us think it's right. None of us think this is a good idea. This was your shit. Your shit's not working. Fix your shit. <laughs> that was just some epic stuff. Gow is so good in this season. Gow is always so good. Like, she was, the, she was, was like, one of the best things in Iron Fist. Oh, God, yeah. She just got... She gets better every time I see her. I can't wait for her to be the villain in Defender Season 2, even though it's definitely going to be the Kingpin. <laughs> um... Also, well, I kind of want it to be the Kingpin, because I want that fight between him and Luke Cage, where the Kingpin punches Luke Cage, and Luke Cage just goes, dude. Um, <laughs> and Kingpin's all, you forget, I'm rich. And then, like, fucking Judas bullets just... <laughs> um, <laughs> there's been some speculation that season three of Daredevil is going to be... Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, Reborn, I think. Yeah, yeah, Rebirth. Or Reborn, uh, I forget. Where where um, Kingpin uh, comes back, exposes Matt Murdock, has a fake Daredevil running around. Because they, they really sell up. If you ever get exposed, Matt, our whole lives are ruined. You will ruin my life, 
and Foggy's life and everybody's life. Everyone you love will get fucked if you ever get exposed. So you can never, ever get exposed. Which means Kingpin's going to do that now. Sure. But, like, <laughs> he, he gets a fake Daredevil to draw Daredevil out. Um, and then once he comes out, he fucking ruins him. Like, I think he just gets a crazed mental patient, straps a Daredevil outfit on, and is like, go nuts. Uh, and then he gets um, Nuke. Is that the guy from Jessica Jones? Nuke, yeah. Nuke, yeah. And he comes in, and he fucks shit up. And we've already set up Nuke and set up that he could be coming back. And he's <laughs> part of this fucking story. Well, they, they got him, and they gave him more delicious pills. Delicious pills. Uh, so, you know, that could be happening. Now, me personally, not exactly, you know, the way I the one I'd want to see. I would want to see it just because... The MCU doesn't do, like, the MCU doesn't do secret identities very well. No. Like, they don't settle well with them. Even in Spider-Man, for all the very valid reasons, a part of me just, in a world where Iron Man's first action was, when Tony Stark's first action was, I am Iron Man, where you have, like, the Sokovia Accords and the Avengers, who really gives a shit about Daredevil? <laughs> And, like, in mm. character, in the moment, in his situation, makes perfect sense for him not to want to get exposed. Sure. Because all his convictions will get overturned, or at least looked into, and Foggy will get disbarred, and his loved ones will get targeted by the Kingpin, because he's the fucking Kingpin, and he's the most bitter, petty little monster. It makes sense. But at the same time, I kind of want to be done with it. I kind of just want Matt Murdock to be the daredevil. Sure. Get it over and done with. Like, get past it, get that shit, resolve it however you resolve it, and then the, just let me have Daredevil. Let me have Daredevil punching bad guys. The only reason I'm not super hot on wanting to see that for season three is because I really want Typhoid Mary. Oh. I really, really, really want Typhoid Mary. Oh, they, oh, Netflix is one of the, like, Netflix Marvel is one of the few things that could do it, too. And, like, here's a theory, too, that might work out with this. And this is me blue skying, so forgive me, because it's not going to happen. But... Also in that storyline, because it is a Frank Miller written storyline, uh, Karen Page turns to drugs and pornography. They have hinted that stuff like that's in her backstory. Yeah, yeah. They, they in season one of Daredevil, in season two to a lesser extent, they mention that, like, I think the, Some drugs, shady and, shit the drugs and porn may have been, like, what she did before. Right. But, okay, instead of that, Kingpin takes her and twists her. Or the actions take her and twist her. Like, yeah, I could, I could and, see and that. And she is the Typhoid Mary instead Ooh. of whoever the fuck Typhoid Mary is. Because that really doesn't matter, her secret identity. It, that's, it doesn't fucking That's matter. not the... Who gives a shit? Yeah. That's not the important part of the character. No, the important part of the character is someone Daredevil loves and wants to have a relationship with who's fucking scatterbrained now. Who literally has multiple personalities and can set shit on fire. Sold. Make Darren that. Yeah, fuck yeah. Also, I, I think saw, there was a time where her I crazy remember was that actress on, too. I remember that actress on, on True Blood. She does crazy really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I dig it, dude. I, I I I can't decide which one of those I want. I want Kingpin to be the villain of, Dare, of Defender Season 2. I think he's big enough for it. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio has also talked about that he wouldn't mind being in Spider-Man as well. So it really oh. depends on what the mouse has for us. Oh, be still my heart. If I could watch Spider-Man on the big screen beat the fuck out of the Kingpin, because at the end of the day, for all Fisk scheming, Spider-Man... Is in a class above him. Yeah, Fisk is really strong man, lots of money. <laughs> Spider-Man is the next best thing to a precog. I want to watch. Who is also ridic strong. I want to watch Peter Parker just get fed up with Wilson Fisk and fucking wreck him <coughs> on the big screen. That would be still my sweet little nerd heart. If you give me that, Marvel, I already give you all my money. I don't know what else you want. <laughs> <laughs> Blood, semen, stool samples. Make Whatever. a clone army of the boys. It's all on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wish, is off I, the table. I wish, you would, I wish you wouldn't do that on our table. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, that was a terrible it was, joke. It was so bad, but I had to get it out. I um, know. So, uh, we, we've, we've talked well long. Um, there are a couple things I want to, you know, Crow about happily before we yeah do we close off. All I've right, been first chatting of all, like a old maid in this uh, one. Misty Knight lost her fucking arm. Woo! I am so psyched. We're not celebrating that because we don't like the character. Although she is a bitch, she makes sense. Uh, you know, she makes so much sense. I love her so much. I love she's her a so bitch, much in this. And show. it would have been so easy for her to be just oh god this bitch again. But, but no. she's not. She because she tries to be reasonable. She's like y'all breaking the law a lot though. 
Y'all, y'all I'm super sh- breaking the law. I'm trying to be reasonable, but y'all gonna be reasonable back. Nope. <laughs> I can't. They're super ninjas. I can't tell. Mm-hmm. Super ninjas. Misty super ninjas. Uh, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and she gets down there and she's like, oh, super ninjas. Okay. I was I was really out of my depth. I really should have listened to y'all. <laughs> uh, Colleen Wing was fucking awesome. Her story was fucking awesome. She was the they, best part. Look, of that shit was that shit was a great author saving throw for Colleen Wing too. Yeah, like, because they she could have been fucked. They managed to write that chip so hard. It was so good. And like, I mean, as always, Rosario is fucking gold. Yeah, she was great. Fried gold, and as is proper, Rosario is the one who introduced the first two defenders. Mm. As is right and good and proper. Um, but yeah, dude, I was so psyched about Misty Knight. I I can't wait. Luke Cage season two might have a werewolf in it. That's awesome. Fucking why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she's got a robot arm. We got Misty Knight with a robot arm and shooting lasers fighting a werewolf with Luke Cage. Fuck yes. I think the Netflix series are a little dark for Spider-Man. But I kind of would like to see a Daredevil Spider-Man team up someday. Maybe once you switch to Miles. <laughs> um, uh, Punisher also looks kind of low key. Good. Yeah. I, I I want to watch it. I'm interested. Frank is not... better when he's not fighting superheroes. Oh, gosh, sure. Yeah. Fr- Frank is better when he's fighting gangsters. When he is fighting human monsters. I, I Once things start to go off the rails, whenever that happens, because it will eventually, um, I really want the Russian. That's all. I'm just putting that on the table. I mean, the real can't... Russian, not Kevin Nash. I was about to say, it's just going to be Kevin Nash again. No, I want him to have his titties, and I want him to be really just happy with himself. That's what I want. I want, I want like, so much from... I want Barracuda. Shit, yeah, fuck sure. Give me the Kuda man. I want Barracuda. Have have Punisher with a, in a gunfight with Barracuda. That'll be so good. Um, yeah, there's just it's so much, so much potential out of this Defender series. I didn't think I was going to be super hot on this. Wasn't looking forward to watching it. Not like in a this is going to be awful kind of way. I don't know why I did Vince McMahon there, but uh, just in like, man, I don't feel like watching. I just finished watching a series last week. But no, I sat down and watched this, and it, it was it's good shit, you know? Good shit! Fantastic. After, if you aren't hooked after the end of episode three, if the end of episode three doesn't make you go, that was really awesome, then, you know, you're probably not going to like the rest of it. But if it does, you hold out to that point, motherfucker. Also, you might be broken inside. <laughs> Dude, even I, I was like, I, I said, damn it. I said it out loud, because I was I was there in my little grognard cave going, I don't want to like it, because it means I have to watch it, blah, blah, blah doing stuff I don't want to because someone else told me to, which is me, but me who controls the podcast, not me who wants to play some games. And then fucking watch it. I was like, damn it, that was really fucking cool. It was. Oh, uh, look. This is go- this is starting to devolve into the Guardians yeah, of Galaxy Yeah, we're podcast. getting Guardians of Galaxy territory. We're gonna finish, we're gonna finish blowing this series now. I think we should wrap up. Any final thoughts? Um... I'm just glad Luke Cage has a show. All the characters surrounding Luke Cage, everything that happened on that show, it's my favorite part of this whole venture. Um, I really want to try to check out The Runaways and uh, Cloak and Dagger and really The New the Warriors. Is that the one we're You know on? what? Actually, this is the first, because I was hyped for Iron Fist before it came out. This is the first Marvel series I'm not looking forward to. Well, it's on Hulu, so it's I not hate, a Netflix I, one. I hate The Runaways. I, I know. You hate... Power Girl? Princess Power? Something like that? Uh, no, it's not even just that. I hate the Runaways. I hate their arcs. I hate their storylines. I hate that one of them has pet Velociraptor. Because I can't think of a single more lol 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 random humor holds up spork thing than a pet Velociraptor. Well, I mean, that was the, that was the era that shit came out in. But I'm looking forward to trying it, man. I kind of like know? Princess Power, to be honest. Yeah. She's one of the only characters who isn't a completely hateable douche. Well, and you know, I mean, look, Tony Stark sucked before Iron Man. That's absolutely fair. That's every time I go into this shit and I'm like, man, I don't want to see that character. Tony Stark sucked before Iron Man. Give this shit a chance. This, and the, I'm going to give The Runaways a shot. I'm going to give Captain Marvel a shot. Cloak and, and Dagger. And I hate Carol Danvers so much. Cloak and Dagger looks like a teen drama, and I don't even care, because they showed him in the fucking cloak, and then she accidentally stabbed a guy, and was like, uh-oh, I got light daggers. And it was like, <gasps> Cloak and Dagger, though! And it's a That's the thing that I like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, I'm in the I'm bag. just happy we're seeing all this shit, man. Fuck it. Give me Y'all all, want the superhero me. bubble to burst? You go, 
fuck yourselves because I'm still having a good time. Yeah, all you bitter motherfuckers are like, oh, I can't wait for this game shit to be over. Fuck you with a rag. Go watch other movies. It's not like they stopped making How? them. How? Literally look at the numbers. Fuck. We're just making more movies. How fucking spoiled are you? You have to be younger go, than me. Go eat your avocado toast. <laughs> You have to be younger than me. I was the last wave of nerds who got shit thrown at their heads and got beaten up. You don't remember what it was like. You don't know. You weren't there. This is a golden age, and every time you spit on it, I want to punch you just that little bit more. Then you become the bully. I know. And then they'll learn. It's the circle of life. <laughs> I just, God damn it, you spoiled brats. This is a golden age. Stop taking it for granted. Except DC. DC's usually better. At least a little. <laughs> it's, it's more maybe Bronze Age DC. At least it's there. Uh, let's be real. <laughs> We're Frank Miller Dark Age DC. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't end the podcast. I can. I Everything's better power. when nerds talk about it. Thank you. Fuck it, let's get high!